Welcome to the Ivory Technical uh, Briefing for 14th of May 2020. Uh, some uh, really big updates to cover today on the Gear X1. So we're going to focus on that and then we're going to look at some online, um, uh, some some of the additional things we can do with Gear, like the training and the App Store, and then a little bit of a summary of some upcoming webinars. So let's get started. So, Gear updates x1 big firmware for that with a load of new functions and the gpa has been updated as well but instead of sitting here and going through the powerpoints i'm going to show you guys how it all looks in gpa and we'll go through it that way so i'll just start the screen sharing so there's been lots of little changes um and some big ones now there's also some things that have kind of been building up over the last few releases uh so we're going to just kind of go through them. Um, one of the first things I want to show you is, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but in Action Center, under settings here, um, it's showing my devices offline, but that's okay. Uh, you've got here read out current project, and that means that you can connect to the return, to, you know, connect to the X1 and load the project from the X1. Now that's going to become more and more relevant as uh, we're going to see we've got uh, more ability to actually extract data that the customer has set on the X1. And as the customer sets more data on the X1, changes the, the layout and things like that. Reading it's really important. Now it will sync it as you download. So if you open your file, your project from file, and you make some changes and you do the commissioning and download, it will at that point say, do you want to load the, the information or the the, um, the customizations from the project? Do you want to load them back up? Uh, but so that, which is fine. There is um, a potential uh, bug that they've, they've identified, a known issue, which they, they'll be fixing in a, in a future release, I'm sure. Whereas if you've made changes to a project that isn't the one that was on there and then you you download it and then when it tries to upload the information it can end up a bit out of sync so they are recommending that if you, to start working on the project you are better to read out the current project make changes to that then download and then it will sync the the customization so good place to start if you know that you're in that commissioning phase and you're you know that the um the customer's not made any changes to the x1 you know that you're the only one downloading to it then that's less of an issue it's when maybe you're returning to site and you're conf you're worried about versions being different this is the right way to get the uh the current project so the next one uh is in the the other changes are in the project um which will just open up now uh Let's have a look first at the uh, user management changes. So in user management, we now have our fixed users, which are our system users um, here. Just uh, hopefully everyone can see that. But we can also add our own users here. Now, you need to have an administration user at this point. So these are the people using the app. One of them needs to be set as the administration administrator, and that's the person that can make changes to the way the app looks and can also manage the users from within the app. So one of them needs to be administrator, but then after that, you can add additional users, which you might call the kids, for example. And instead of giving them administrator, you'll just give them user rights. We're going to call them kids. And from here, we can now set which functions they can see. So different users are able to see different parts of the building. Now, as you add more functions, they will come up here and you can see the list. So it might be that the kids don't need access to the lights in the garage. So you'll untick that nice and simple. You have multiple users, uh, nice and easy to, to add them and manage them. So we can set the functions access here, but one of the new updates is that we can actually uh, set the function, uh, the visibility of the function on the function so if i just go into one in the ground floor in the entrance hall right as we get down to function level we can see here on the right hand side where we've got our normal settings for the function we can now have we've got the visibility option and we can select who can see them now the user one here can see all the functions because that's that administrator role whereas the kids we can select it so if you're doing a commissioning a new project, as long as you set your users up at the beginning, then as you're going through, you can be making the changes when you add each function. Alternatively, you could do the users at the end and then you can see your function list and you can change them all then. So that's one of the specific updates in this uh, release, which is 4.2, is the uh, visibility on the function. 
Uh, another big change or a, 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 a really nice improvement is on the user app, we can now uh, change timers based on daylight. Uh, we can use the uh, daylight settings for the timers and we'll, we'll see that in just a second. But one, what, what that has also changed is when we come into the timers view, we've got two lots now. We've got the timers here, which, is our, our, which are our GPA system timers for programming, the ones that the user has no access to, things that you know, are at, happening at a system level. But we now have our function timers here, and these are the, what have been added via the app. I've added a couple as an example. From here, we can delete them, and we can activate or deactivate them, but we can't actually change the timing. The timing settings here are all grayed out. They are only set via the app. So uh, really nice though, because you can see, uh, at, you know, easily see what the customer's set up, or if you've been doing them in the functions for the customer, you can see them, makes it easier to know what's going on in the project and activate and deactivate them. Uh, and here another example, uh, nice and simple. So separate because we have timers that set, mean they're the system timers and then function timers, which are the ones linked to the apps. Uh, on timers, there is another little known issue, which is where you're creating um, uh, times on uh, days of the week. Now, sometimes the days of the weeks don't show or you can't change them. They don't actually activate. If that happens, you just need to change this, change the num repeat every, and then change it back again, and it should unlock it. I can't. I'm not showing the issue. It's it's a it's a occasional problem. Intermittent. Again, they're working on it. But if you have got any issues here, just change the settings, and it should update the days of the week, so you can then make other changes. Another one I wanted to just um, cover off on is the connect button up here. Now, this connect gives you uh, activates the remote access. Uh, which should work. Now, if you're using the Gear S1 for your remote access to your installation, uh, you, you make the settings in the remote access tab here from the main tile, and then you've got your remote access module. The benefit of, of this though is if you once you've made the connection here in ETS, it will automatically see the connections. You don't need to install the standalone um, um, gear a program that gives you remote access to the S1. The simplest way is open GPA, uh, enable the remote access here with the connect button, and then all of a sudden ETS will uh, see the remote IP connection straight away. Nice and simple, no messing around with VPNs or anything like that. So that's the simplest way to do that. So that's the main changes in, um, the, uh, in GPA. Uh, when you uh, when you make a download and commissioning, it 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 will ask you. I haven't made any change. We'll make we'll make some changes on the app first. So if we just come through to the app now, this is the um, Windows application for the for the app, which means you can run it on a desktop. Uh, it's laid out the same uh, as using it on an app. Just uh, means it's nice and easy for testing, commissioning, and means you guys can see it if I do a screen share. So the main uh, changes relate to the way you can um, change how things look. So if we go into the settings tab, depending which level you are, so I'm logged in as the administrator, so I can change all of this. If I was logged in as one of the users, as the kid user, then I wouldn't be able to see these. So there's two places where you can change the way the app looks. The first is in the view configuration. And here you can, you can um, say what the home looks like, what the view of home is, whether it's detailed view or a tiled view. Uh, you can change, uh, you can select favorites and choose the favorites which come up on the front page. And you can now say whether the favorites come in front or behind of the other functions. So if I just quickly go back to the home page and, and use the grid here to get to the home. These two are favorites, the house off and the scene extension uh, and the light are favorites and they're before the building view or you can have the building view first and then have the favorites after and that's changed with the view uh, favorites in front now the other one that's new is the show functions now functions is the trades tile uh, so where we have um, if we just I've turned that on so if I go back to home 
go back to the home view. We now have, I've turned it back on, so now we have the trades view again. Now, that's where it lists things by light or by, um, lists all the lighting or the scenes or the heatings. Uh, I know that it, it was asked to be removed uh, by a lot of people because they just don't feel that customers really understand what that is. You can change the name of it, but that is the fun whether you can view the functions or not in the settings. So those are the main uh, view configuration changes. So show functions or not. Now the other one is the ability to manage what the actual app looks like in terms of the names of rooms, the names of functions, the order of things. Um, and that's all done under these administrator functions. So from here I can manage rooms and I can, I can see a room, the entrance hall. Maybe I don't like that it's called the entrance hall. I can rename it to the entrance. And I can change the symbol as well. And I can do that for all the different levels in the project. It's loaded the full um, few, the full symbol table. I can select which I would like for that. Maybe I want it to have this coat hanger, for example. And then now that has changed. So there's a huge amount of additional uh, labeling and, and control really that the customer has uh, over everything really, even functions, and they can change uh, the order of things as well, which is one of the new updates. Um, you can, uh, I'll just have another look here. Here you can, I'll just get to a list from the ground floor. Here I can change the order that things appear on the app. So a lot of uh, customization that the, the end user can do. Uh, so uh, I can also manage users, which is the final one. And in here, is where I can set up which users, I haven't downloaded where I've added the kids, but in here is where I can see uh, the kids account, what they can see, give, give them different access levels as well. So you could either do a really basic setup for the homeowner and then give them the flexibility to change it all, or you sit down with them and you say and discuss how you want they want the app to look, how they want the different levels to be. You do all the work for them as an integrator, and then you give them the ability to customize it and make minor changes. So you know you've 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 kind of helped them and guided them through it, and then uh, they're able to customize it. Uh, so just quick question though: Are those changes user user specific? Yeah, absolutely. So you can have as many users as you want, um, and then. Oh no, sorry, the, the overall labels aren't user specific. That's why the administrator can do them. Um, but the what each user can see is user specific. So those are the main uh, changes in the, um, in the app that I wanted to show you. Um, so we're gonna uh, just look next at the really, really big change, which is the uh, adding of license overview. So you now can add licenses into the X1. And the first set of licenses that we have are to do with increasing the level of the functionality of the X1. Uh, so you add them just by, um, you can just import them here from the Gear app shop, uh, which we're going to have a look at now. So the, uh, sorry, just a quick question. Do we still need to use favorites to present specific room functions on a G1? If you want to get them to the front page, then absolutely, yep. Favorites are the best way to do that. So by adding um, a device as a favorite, then that will be on the front page. But the benefit now is, I'll just quickly show you that actually. Um, if we go to the settings for the user, uh, view configuration, and then favorites, we select favorites that we want on the app, uh, where I've already defined a couple. I've already got three of the 11 as favorites. But with the G1 in particular, because you can now change the sort order and put the favorites in front, that means that the G1, that will be the first function on the list in the G1. And you can get rid of that trades view, which will tidy up that view as well. So those are, I think, are, are particularly relevant for if you are using the G1 display device, those couple of changes you can make there. So uh, looking at the Gear app shop, uh, definitely worth, uh, you know, logging in here. There's loads of uh, really cool functionality, which we'll, we'll look at. Um, but the two for the X1 initially are one that increases the number of functions. Um, you can virtual add a 125 additional functions. 
and 500 additional group addresses. So it's 125 euros, which you purchase through the app shop. Once you've brought the X1, you add the functionality, uh, you get additional, uh, yeah, 125 additional functions and 500 additional group addresses. Uh, then the other one is the, uh, let me just go back. Then the other one is an additional 250 functions with a thousand additional group addresses. Now the beauty of this is you can use them uh, you can use them together, so you can add uh, both of the uh, licenses, uh, install one, install the other. So with the uh, base number of function, the base number of um, functions and data points with the two extensions, the X1 can now control 625 functions and two and a half thousand data points. So it massively increases the size of project that the X1 is um, is able to control is relevant for. Uh, so yeah, you can add one, add the other as well, and then in total that adds up to 625 functions. So those are the um, X1 apps, but there's a couple of really awesome, well, there's a lot in here that are actually for the home server. Now, um, some of the, uh, there's, a, there's about 128, I think, function uh, that you can add to the home server. Now, a lot of them are free. They're just, you know, adding a, either a logic block or it might be an extra function. It might be a combination. It might just be a, a global template. So an example of how to achieve this level of functionality. So there's lots that you can download that are free. There's a couple that uh, in particular that I wanted to highlight. And one of them is the bar graph which enables you to, it's a plugin, uh, 34.75 euros, so, so really not that much. Um, this enables you to do a completely different type of graphing on the home server, as we can see here. There's a couple of different display types, really good for if you're doing um, energy monitoring, uh, just looking at, you know, displaying data and, and uh, information in different ways. Uh, really good for comparing different time periods as well. So that's, a, I think, a really nice uh, plugin that that does take what we've we've seen a huge amount of updates to the uh, home server in, in the last uh, couple of months. They've, or the, um, you know, they're, they're adding um, different ways to do the visualization and change the color schemes and things like that, which is fantastic. But we can also plug in and add this additional functionality. So that for me is is probably the the, the highlight. Another uh, really interesting one is the. Um, is uh, an automatic watering one. We talked, I covered it in the tech briefing a couple of months ago around um, automatic watering and using um, linking to um, if this then that, for example, and getting in the, the weather information. There's a logic module here that, um, that does a lot of the work for you. Um, goes into um, uh, looking at the, if you've got a, uh, a, um, a grey water tank and it measures the water in the tank and it can it can use that uh, linked to a rain sensor so it knows when to turn on or off but it, it manages the times and the intervals it's a logic function but it's all pre-configured uh, so it, it makes it a lot simpler to manage uh, it is shown as in German here but we can see just here that it is a English um, logic module as well which is great so additional functionality there for a watering example another one is the smoke heat pl um, uh, plugin which uh, enables you it's a function template uh, so it links to the gear of smoke alarms and it gives you a function block specifically for smoke and heat now this will be linking through via um, I believe it's linking via logic so you've got um, you could use it with maybe an external system. Um, you can see here just uh, add some extra symbols and we can see the state of the smoke alarm. I hope everyone can still see that on the screen share. Um, and then it's got a pop up as well, which enables you to do things like silence the alarm, see the maintenance status, things like that. So again, really interesting um, extension of, uh, of the home server functionality. Um, and another final one is the um, uh, it's the daily lighting one. So uh, this, um, sorry, it didn't load. Uh, it's a logic module and it enables you to work with the Ghirardali gateway, the emergency lighting one, and bring in the, uh, the is it a th uh, the three byte object 
um, from the Dali Gateway and do all the emergency testing. It gives you the information about, you know, which um, fittings fa failed, uh, what's the battery level, and it breaks down the information coming from the Dali Gateway in a way that's more easier to use in logic on the home server. So you take the object, the three byte object from your Dali Gateway, and it interprets all the different bits and gives you the status of all the different fittings in the system. And it's three euro seventy five. So great little plugins. Log, create a login for the app shop. Um, definitely look there when you're when you're working with the home server and going. Oh, I wonder if there's a way to do this. Really good place to start. 128 different functions that uh, and different um, different apps that you can you can add to it. Uh, the one thing I'd just say on the um, on the home page, um, you've got um, on the home server view. You have got uh, apps that. Um, uh, integrators or um, you know software companies have developed so you've got the gear approved um, sort function um, and here it says gear approved that means it's been tested to work by gear uh, so uh, there are some on there that haven't the sheer majority have so definitely worth having a look around the app shop uh, the other one is um, well, we'll jump back to the uh, presentation now, I think, unless anybody's got any more um, questions on that. Okay, so is the bar graph from a specific expertive version? Uh, very good question. I'll, let's just have a quick look. Um, it will say on it, um, plug it in bar graph. Um, there is an example project with the bar graph, which is free, which you can have a look at as well. Um, so uh, it's from version 4.7 uh, and quad client 4.7 uh, we're now on 4.10 uh, so it's it's relatively recent um just see if there's any other questions doesn't look like it uh on as uh, uh can we overlay three elements on graph um I'm not sure on the number. Um, you've got the different views here. It can do single or double graphs. So not three lines, you can do a double graph. Uh, so the double graph, I think, is an example here where you've got the two data sets on the graph, but you can't do three. There is a sample project there for free. Um, so download that, have a play with it and see what it looks like. These are um, the licenses or the, the, the app shop, the MAC address linked. So you can only add one per uh, home server. Cool. All right. We'll uh, stop the screen sharing and just quickly come back to the presentation for the last little bit. Um, here we go. Right. So, um, oh, a couple of other updates I missed on the 4.2 uh, GPA. Um, errors that draft logic, um, logic sheets that were in the draft folder weren't tested for errors uh, when you did a check project. Now this isn't errors that stop you uploading. They are now checked, which means you can work on a draft and you can use the check project to see if your logic is correct or not. So I think that's a really nice increase in functionality. And the other big one is the works with Sonos certification. Now to do that, they had to change the way the device page looked when you log into the um, device uh, using its IP address. Uh, and there is where you configure the Sonos setup. They just had to change playlists to be favorites and um, that was the only thing they needed to to change to make it to get works with sonos uh certification uh which is good um i didn't show you the timer functions on the if you go into the functions in the app you go to timers and then um you'll just have the sunset sunrise options in there that we that we've normally had in the gpa so uh it's pretty simple so i haven't shown you that but it should be easy to work out uh, cool. So um, we've done the the App Store. Uh, the other one is the Academy. I'm not sure everyone's aware of this, but it's the Gera um, training site. There is a lot of um, uh, videos on there for um, for the home server, for X1, for Doorcoms. Uh, definitely worth looking at if anyone's got spare time at the moment. Um, huge amount in there, um, and there's a an update uh, X1 video there, which includes how to do the Sonos setup, the if this, then that, and how to add the license process. So just go to, uh, it's a bit of a funny uh, URL. I'll, I'll share it when I, um, I'll share it when I, uh, on the, in the description below, but also uh, in the email I'll send after this. So academy.gera.de. 
so yeah, definitely worth looking at lots of information in there. Right, that's it for this technical briefing. Uh, thank you all very much. Loads of other stuff to look at on the channel. Please subscribe for updates uh, and hopefully see you all on the next one.